People are often very confused by malignancies in haematology. Today we're going to do a very quick overview of the main diseases, just the absolute basics. By the end of the video, you should be able to describe each of these diseases in just one sentence. If you want, you can pause the video here and try that for yourself first. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at myeloma. Myeloma is a neoplastic disease of plasma cells. Can you remember what plasma cells are? They're grown up B lymphocytes that have become activated and turned into antibody producing cells. As you might imagine, there's going to be loads more antibodies floating around than there are normally. And if you think about it, all of these antibodies are going to be exactly the same. And that's because they're all coming from the cancerous clones of the original plasma cell that went wrong and became cancerous. These antibodies, which are all the same, are known as monoclonal antibodies, or in the case of myeloma, they're known as paraprotein. The common symptoms that myeloma patients get come from the fact that there's the paraprotein floating around, which clogs up the kidneys, and also they can get problems because there's too many myeloma cells, too many plasma cells clogging up the bone marrow, and that causes problems like anemia, because there's no room to make the normal red blood cells, and also bone pain. Identifying and measuring the paraprotein in the body is really important for diagnosing and for monitoring myeloma. Next is lymphoma. Lymphoma is a neoplastic disease of mature lymphocytes in lymphoid tissue. This cancer can be found anywhere where grown-up lymphocytes can live. This could be in the peripheral lymph nodes, so for example in the neck, it could be in the lymph nodes in the chest, or it could be anywhere where lymphoid tissue is, for example the, the lymphoid tissue in the gut, or it could be in the tonsils. It could even be in the skin. For the most part, lymphoma is a solid tumour. It's all in one place. Okay, before we talk about the next diseases, we're going to look back at what's happening in bone marrow. We're going to look at hematopoiesis. What we've got here is basically the family tree of blood cells. In your bone marrow, these pluripotent stem cells are rapidly dividing. Some of them will differentiate into these cells and progress down the lymphoid line, eventually becoming either B or T lymphocytes. Alternatively, the pluripotent stem cells might differentiate into these cells and eventually become red blood cells, platelets, or any of the other white blood cells, such as neutrophils or monocytes. Now let's talk about leukaemia. There are a number of ways to divide up leukaemia. Most importantly, we need to divide acute leukaemias from chronic leukaemias, as these are very different diseases. Let's look back at our diagram of hematopoiesis. The cells at the top here are the pluripotent stem cells. The machinery of these cells is geared up for fast replication, and besides that, they aren't very useful for anything. As we go further down, the cells become more mature. The machinery in the cells becomes less about rapid division and more about doing the job the cell is supposed to do. In other words, function as a red blood cell or as a neutrophil. With that being said, where do you think the mutation or cancerous cell would be in terms of maturity in an acute leukaemia, where there's rapid, stormy onset with a very high white cell count and rapid proliferation and turnover of cells? You might have guessed that the cells are going to be up here at the top of the diagram. They're going to be immature. And how mature would the cancerous cell be in a chronic leukaemia? Usually much slower, more indolent diseases with cells that are actually functional. These would be lower down. They're going to be more mature cells. Acute leukaemia is a neoplastic disease of immature blood cells called blasts in the bone marrow. Tests can show us whether the cells are from the myeloid lineage or the lymphoid lineage. And on this basis, we can say that the leukaemia is acute myeloid leukaemia or acute lymphoid leukaemia. The acute leukaemias have a dramatic stormy onset. There might be a very, very high white cell in the patient because all of the blood cells are spilling out from the marrow. The white cell count actually might be in the hundreds. And this creates a blood which is very, very viscous and sticky, which can cause problems in clotting. Because of all the leukemic cells in the bone marrow, there's not really any room to make normal blood cells. As a result, the patients are often very anemic or have no platelets, 
Although there are lots of white cells, they don't really work properly because they're too immature. So the patient is also very likely to get infections and they're usually very, very unwell when they're in hospital. Chronic leukemia is a neoplastic disease of mature white blood cells in the bone marrow. Just like in acute leukemia, tests can help us decide whether the cells are from the lymphoid lineage or the myeloid lineage. And on that basis, we can say that the leukemia is either chronic myeloid leukemia or chronic lymphoid leukemia. Because the cancerous cells are mature, chronic leukemias are often indolent diseases that happen over a long period of time. Patients are often asymptomatic for the first part of their disease. In some cases, the disease course is so indolent that actually elderly patients might not need any treatment at all. And this is often the case in CLL or chronic lymphocytic leukemia. It's worth noting though that in some leukemias, particularly CML or chronic myeloid leukemia, there's a risk of that indolent disease turning into an acute myeloid leukemia. The myeloproliferative diseases are a group of neoplastic disorders involving the bone marrow cells that produce red blood cells, platelets or fibroblasts. That sounds really complicated, so think about it like this. CML, or chronic myeloid leukemia, is the overproduction of the mature white blood cells in the myeloid line. Now, the myeloproliferative diseases are very similar, except it's all the other cells that might be produced which aren't white cells. In other words, you get overproduction of red blood cells, you can have overproduction of platelets, or actually you can have overproduction of the fibroblasts, which are the things which make the connective tissue, the kind of scar tissue and that sort of thing within the bone marrow. So if you have a condition where too many red blood cells are made, that's called polycythemia rubra vera. If there are too many platelets produced, it's called essential thrombocythemia. Myelofibrosis is also included here, which is the overproduction of the fibroblasts, which make the connective tissue. And when there's too many of those, you end up with lots and lots of collagen in there, which is basically scar tissue. Okay, let's move on to myelodysplastic syndrome, or myelodysplasia as it's also known. First of all, what do we mean by dysplasia? Well, basically dysplasia just means weird looking or abnormally functioning cells. When we look down the microscope, they don't look quite right. The amount of dysplasia in cells is one of the things that a pathologist or a haematologist will be looking for if they're looking for cancer down a microscope. Cells which are dysplastic aren't necessarily cancerous, but it can be a sign of a precancerous change in cells. This is the same for a cervical cancer smear or a breast tissue biopsy as it is in a bone marrow biopsy. So, myelodysplastic syndrome is a precancerous disease of bone marrow where the dysplastic cells may cause abnormal or inadequate blood cell production. It can also progress to an acute leukemia. Myelodysplasia normally happens in older people who've had a number of years to develop little mutations in their cells which eventually makes them look and function abnormally. Because the dysplastic cells aren't very good at doing their job, the bone marrow tries to compensate by generally increasing the amount of hematopoiesis going on. Therefore, if you take a sample of the patient's bone marrow, as well as seeing weird looking dysplastic cells, you'll also see a lot more activity going on. Because those dysplastic cells aren't very good at doing their job, the patient will often be anemic or thrombocytopenic, so they will often require regular transfusions. As you can imagine, a strange looking and abnormally functioning cell with lots of mutations isn't really that far off a full-blown cancer. And so patients with myelodysplastic syndrome always have a risk of developing an acute leukemia. Okay, so that's it. You should now have a very basic understanding of the main malignancies in haematology. And we'll just go over those again now. Myeloma is a neoplastic disease of plasma cells. Lymphoma is a neoplastic disease of mature lymphocytes in lymphoid tissue. Acute leukemia is a neoplastic disease of immature white blood cells called blasts in the bone marrow. Chronic leukemia is a neoplastic disease of mature white blood cells in the bone marrow. The myeloproliferative diseases are a group of neoplastic disorders of the bone marrow cells which produce red cells, platelets, fibroblasts and myelodysplastic syndrome 
is a precancerous disease of bone marrow where the dysplastic cells can cause abnormal and inadequate cell production and also may progress to a leukaemia. I hope you can join us again to take a more detailed look at each of these cancers in their own videos.